Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video, and welcome back to another episode of Simple Steps. I started this little series because I wanted to simplify some musical concepts and make them easier to hear, easier to think about, easier to practice, and then easier to implement in your playing. In today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about the long 251. If you wanna do a deep dive on what I think is the most important element of improvising, and that's creating melodic solos using guide tones, I have a free masterclass for you. If you go into the description down below, at the very top, there's a link to that free masterclass. It's 40 minutes long. There's nine pages of PDFs that explain step-by-step -step the process that I use for creating beautiful melodic solos and how you can easily implement that into your own playing. All you gotta do is enter your email address, your social security number, your banking information, Oh, just the, just, the, just your email address. Now, just to get the terminology straight, for me, I call a long two, five, one when you have a full measure of the two chord, a full measure of the five chord, and then maybe a resolution chord afterwards. In C major, a long two, five, one would be a full measure of D minor seven, then a full measure of G seven, and then the resolution chord C major seven. I know that when I started playing and started learning to build vocabulary, being able to string a line along for multiple measures and sitting on one chord for multiple beats like that can be pretty tricky and, and when it's a stagnant chord, I had a hard time with it and I know a lot of you might have a hard time as well. So, the easiest way to create motion through a 2-5-1 is really to look at the 5 chord. All we're going to do is put a short 2-5-1 in the same key over the measure of the 5 chord. Once again, talking terminology, for me, a short 2-5-1, in this case, is when you have two beats of the two chord, then two beats of the five chord. So, the result is you get a full measure of your D minor that leads into a short 2-5-1 of D minor again for two beats, then G7 for two beats, then you resolve on the C major. Now, some of you might be saying, you're just adding an extra chord in there. You're actually making it more complicated, not simpler. Hear me out. When building your own vocabulary, you really want to start with smaller snippets and smaller phrases that you can practice easier and then implement easier into your playing. This is why I think it's really important when discussing 2-5-1s to start with the short 2-5-1. This means working on guide tone lines over the 2-5-1, implementing specific sounds and colors over the 2-5-1, which we're going to get to in a minute, and also transcribing short 2-5-1 phrases. So once again, hear me out. I am lazy. I like to call it efficient, but most people call it laziness. I want to get to the end result as quickly and easily as possible. That's why I made this series. So for me, if I can just work on short 2-5 vocabulary and then be able to implement that over short 2-5-1s and long 2-5-1s, seems like I'm killing two birds with one stone, doesn't it? So like I mentioned earlier, you can work on colors and different sounds over that short 2-5-1 to give you that motion and that tension through the five chord to then help you resolve to the one chord. So now I'm gonna go over six of my favorite colors over a 2-5-1. The first one is probably the most commonly played alteration on the dominant seven chord, and that is the flat nine. The easiest way to get to this sound is to play a diminished seven chord based on the third of that five chord. So in the key of C major, Five chord is G7, you're gonna play B, D, F, A flat, which gives you a B diminished seven chord. Those of you keeping score at home know that this is also the three, five, flat seven, flat nine of that dominant seven chord. And here's what that sounds like in the context of a short two, five, one, when you put it over the entire measure of the five chord. The next sound I'm gonna give you is probably my favorite sound to use over a dominant chord, and that's the flat nine with the added natural 13th. You could think of that in an easy way by playing a major triad based on the sixth of that five chord, or you can actually think of it as the third of the chord you're resolving to. Either way, it gets you to the same sound. So once again, in C major, you're gonna play an E major triad over that G7, and it sounds like this. And here's another sound using the 9th and the 13th, but this time they're both gonna be flat. So flat nine, flat 13. For this one, you're gonna think of a minor triad based on the flat nine of that five chord. If that sounds scary, don't worry. All you gotta do is go up a half step from the root of the five chord, play a minor triad, and you got the sound. Here's what it sounds like. For the fourth sound, I'm gonna give you the flat nine, sharp 11 sound over that dominant chord. What you're gonna do is play a major triad based on that sharp 11 over the dominant chord, and it sounds like this. Now we're gonna get to everybody's favorite, the diminished scale. So if you see a dominant seven chord, you will play that chord's 
half hole diminished. So in this case, G7, you would play G half hole diminished. You can also think of it, if you like the whole half diminished, go up a half step and think G sharp or A flat, whole half diminished. Either way, it gives you this sound. The reason why I like doing it descending like I just played in that line is you get all the color over top of the five chord when you think of it as a short two five. So even though you're putting the entire scale over that G7, the last half of that measure, the five chord in our short two five one, you're getting the sharp 11, three, sharp nine, flat nine, resolving to the five, beautiful sound. And for the final sound, we're gonna do the tritone substitution. I did an entire Simple Steps video on the tritone sub. You can check it out linked in the description down below. Basically, all you're gonna think of is play a major seven chord, a half step below the root that you're going to. So if you're going to C major before it, over the G, you're gonna play B major seven. The reason being the B major seven is the three, five, seven, nine of A flat minor, which is the tritone sub to Too confusing. All you gotta do is play B major seven over the G and it sounds like this. So those are six sounds that you can use over these short two five ones. And no, they're not all the sounds you can use. They're just six that I like to use and I figured I'd show them to you. Now you might be thinking, well, you left the two chord blank in all these. What are you supposed to do there? Well, the great thing about thinking of the five chord measure as a short two five one is that's where all the action is. That's where all the color, the tension, and all the motion is. All you have to do is focus on leading into that. So you can use your guide tones leading in. You could play some diatonic stuff. You can mess around and be as creative as you want as long as you have that aim and that goal of the short two five over the dominant chord. Now I'm gonna play those same six lines again, back to back to back, but I'm gonna add in just some improvisation over that first measure, which is the two chord. And here's what they sound like. These are all lines that I wrote out ahead of time. I put them down, I'm playing them exactly how they're written every single time. But what does it sound like when you actually put it into practice and you play through a tune thinking about long two fives as a short two five? Well, I'm gonna play a chorus over My Shining Hour. It's not gonna be the craziest chorus in the world. It's not gonna be the most creative thing ever. But every time there was a long two five one in the song, I thought of that five chord measure as a short two five one. And here's what it sounds like. Now, if you listen to that and I didn't tell you I was thinking of the short two fives, would you have been able to tell I was thinking that? Maybe, maybe not. But the idea is as a performer, if you think about that motion, it helps you play more motion, keep the line moving forward and give you more ideas and you're able to implement those shorter ideas much quicker and easier into your playing. Hence, simple steps. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Simple Steps and I hope you are able to implement it into your own playing. If this is something that you've already implemented in your own playing, I'd love to hear down in the comments below how long you've been working on it and how it has helped your playing. Also, if this is completely new to you and you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll definitely get to them and I'll answer them. Thanks so much for watching this again. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click that link down below, get your free masterclass, and I will see you in the next video.